Hi there, welcome back. This video has been in the making for about two months now. It all started when the semester began and I was thinking of video ideas. I wanted to make a video about one of my programming projects and document the entire thing, but then thought it would be too stressful since the projects themselves usually take up my entire life until I'm done with them. Bad things changed when my computer graphics professor told us about our project and that we could make a game if we wanted. I immediately loved this project and decided to try and record the evolution of it, since not only will it make a good video like I planned, but also because I hope that my project can turn out great in the end, considering it had a bit of a rough start. So to keep me hopeful, I recorded some of my programming sessions while working on this project. When the project started, I decided to be the leader of the group. By the way, that's the first time I've ever done that, since I usually hate taking responsibility for others. It turned out to be a very good or very bad decision. Depends on how you look at it. The first two weeks of the semester went by quick. Our professor only wanted us to think of an idea and make a project proposal that contained sketches of what the project might look like and explain it. Funny enough, one of my scrapped video ideas was making a game in a week, and I had already made some pixel art assets and backgrounds for it, but they never saw the light of day until now. So I kinda recycled them and changed the story into something simple for our project. And then I sent it to my teammates so we can take a bit of inspiration from it. They loved the idea so we all collectively decided to go on with it and make a game called Princess Picnic Adventure. When the project proposal was done, it was time to actually work. I'll give you a bit of a run through of all the characters and objects that we needed to make so we can actually start programming the game. First up is the princess in her two outfits, Sir Eric the Knight, the giant who is also a farmer or if you couldn't tell, a giant strawberry, picnic basket, and a picnic cloth. There's obviously much more, but we'll discuss those later. We used Visual Studio and OpenGL to make our project, since that is what our entire course is about. This is the code that I made for the princess, and this is the moment I actually decided that I wanted to make this video, which is why there is no footage of how I actually wrote this code. But I do have pictures. This was still at the start of the semester before we practiced, so I had a bad time trying to figure out proper coordinates. It just took way longer than it should have been. But this is how they looked like during the runtime. After scaling the princess and making some code to be able to move her, a problem showed, which was the fact that points in her object function didn't scale down like every other shape did. So I needed to fix it, but of course, not before I gave her whiplash. A simple change of the point size fixed the problem, but oh my- Moving on, I made a prototype background to test how we can move the princess around while also moving the background. See, the problem that my professor talked to me about is that there's 4 to 5 backgrounds and lots of stuff to go through. And we're just 4 students. Other groups had 5 or even 6 in a single group. So we were basically competing with people who can spread the work better than us and achieve more at the same time. So my professor suggested that instead of making each background its own object, we can make them as one long background and translate it as the princess moves. And side note, translating an object is basically just moving it from one point to another. Personally, I didn't like the idea, but I still had to give it a try. This unfortunately made me waste so much time, because like I said, we were still very new to OpenGL. So I just had to squeeze my brain until I figured out a way to move this damn background. And of course I managed to do it in the end, but I hated it. The code itself was messy and just awful. And even though the background can move as planned, it's still not good enough because the princess can run off screen and just go into the void without a trace. So I deleted all the code for the moving background and started again with normal backgrounds like how I planned it in my head. After thinking of ways to make the princess move from one scene to another, I decided to work with flags. So if the translation value of the princess reaches a specific range, the flag for the first background would indicate it to disappear, and the flag for the second background would indicate it to appear. In theory, this was the best way to make what I wanted come to life. But in practice, however, somehow I managed to do the background flags right, but not the princess flags, or the scaling for them. And because I was so frustrated, I just kept making things worse and worse. Good news is though, I did make it work by the end of day 3, so that was a relief. At this point, about a week had passed after I asked my project teammates to start working on their assigned objects. And this is how their work turned out. First up is Eric the Knight, who has a few issues, but I fixed them earlier. Then the giant berry that is very big brain, if you couldn't tell. The basket that looks like it has carrots and not strawberries in it. And last but definitely not least, the giant who skipped leg day way too many times. 
The only object that turned out decent without me needing to fix it was the picnic cloth. And this is the start of a very bad phenomenon called by wishing she did this project on her own because she has control issues and no one seems to do what they were freaking asked to. Listen, I thought being a leader for this project was gonna be great. Most of my friends can vouch for me being a good leader, but this project definitely shattered that reputation now. So anyways, I took a breath and decided to move on. This session was a very fulfilling one because now it was finally time to work on the backgrounds. There are five, two inside the castle and three outside it. So I took the backgrounds inside the castle and each teammate took one background outside it. This was honestly really fun because I basically worked and created things however I liked. There were no rules or constraints and I just imagined and tried to replicate it using OpenGL objects and shapes. When it comes to the colors though, I used a website called Color Hunt and copied the hex code of whichever color I liked to another website called EasyRGB, which converted the code to an OpenGL color line. So that was really neat, and I think I saved so much time by doing this. It sounds like a hassle, but doing it manually would have taken me ages if I'm honest. The candles here were fun to mess around with, because I didn't have any references, so I just changed the coordinates however I liked. Then I created a window and used the built-in interpolation system that worked great in showing a blurry image of the background. So obviously there's the grass, then the sky, and the sun. I thought it was cool since we incorporated something we used in class, and even if you look at it without context, you can still kind of figure out what I was going for with the colors. And this is the result of today's work. A few things to know here. I added some things to the background, and also the princess finally starts the game with the correct outfit, which is her royal dress. And the first mission is that she needs to go to her room and change to an appropriate picnic outfit. So when the player moves her and she is right next to her door, that translation value mixed with pressing C on the keyboard will make the first princess object disappear and the picnic princess appear. Remember what I said about flags earlier? Yeah, this is how they work. So now when the princess goes outside her castle, which the background isn't ready for yet, so don't mind that, she can meet Sir Eric the Knight and have a chat with him. What I recorded next is a very bittersweet improvement to the project. Why is it bittersweet, you ask? Well, because it didn't even make it to the final project. Having audio in our project was an optional addition. It isn't a requirement. But I thought it would be really cool if I added medieval adventure music, since that is what the game is centered around. And I worked all day trying to install an additional library to add sounds, since they aren't built in. I watched so many YouTube videos and open files I didn't even know I could open. And at the end of the day, I finally made it to work. For some reason, it made the game lag a bit at the start and only show a white screen, but it didn't matter. I sent the code to my teammates to see if the project works for them too, because I just had a bad feeling about it. And of course, the project couldn't even run, because in their project files, they didn't install that library, so the entire project couldn't work. I emailed my professor about this and she said to either save it as a .exe file or run the project using my computer during the presentation. But I just didn't like the idea of the code not being able to work at all when I send it to someone else just because of a stupid sound library. So I deleted all the code for it. Not having audio in the game sounds a lot better than having the game not work at all for anyone else. It was unfortunate that once again, something I worked so hard for turned out to be completely useless. But honestly, at this point, I didn't even have time to break down, so I just moved on to the next task. Though apparently, I didn't even have time to press record either because I have no footage of any of the sessions afterwards. But here is how the game looks like. It's about 90% done at this point. So first, you change clothes next to the princess's door, which has a giant crown, just in case you were curious whose room this was. Then the princess goes outside to meet the knight. As she's walking to the picnic area, she finds a giant strawberry, but she can't pick it up yet because she doesn't have her basket with her, so she walks. When she reaches the picnic area, she grabs the basket using the B key on the keyboard and the cloth appears. She goes back and more strawberries appear. By clicking on the screen, she collects them, and after they're all gone, the giant appears. She goes back and as she's standing on the cloth and the E key is pressed, the game ends and you get the bad ending screen. Now without text, or context for that matter, the game seems weird and just doesn't make any sense. So it was about time that we implement those. And not only that, we also added textures which we learned during class as well. Both text and textures were optional, but our game needed them, so we had to add them in. Adding text was so annoying, to the point that when I showed it to my professor during one of our lab sessions, she literally had to look it up on Google. 
It's crazy how simple things like this turn out to be the most time consuming because we were approaching the submission deadline and the game wasn't 100% finished yet. And not only that, we also needed to make a report and a presentation. I'm making this video after we did all of that and everything is done. The presentation went out okay I guess. I did forget some of my lines but I managed to get back on track. And now for the final results of our project. Honestly I'm very proud of this. We were only 4 people and I may have been a tough leader to deal with but we still managed to hold our own as a small group and make the best out of the circumstances that happened along the way. I hope this video can encourage you to start learning OpenGL because it's honestly so fun. The reason I didn't enjoy it in this project was because I was in so much stress. But just try it as a hobby or to pass time and create some scenes using shapes and objects. I hope you guys enjoyed this absolute roller coaster. Thank you for watching and stay hellish.